welcome to Cape Breton Movers and Shakers, where we talk with people who are doing interesting things here in Cape Breton. I'm Richard Lorway, president of GoCapeBreton.com. And with me today is Martin K. Val, CEO of Destination Cape Smokey. Welcome, Martin. Thank you for having me. Oh, super, super to have you here. So, you know, I've been following for the last couple of years news of your developments at Cape Smokey. And we've, you know, if you're from the island, you've always felt that was kind of a, you know, a hidden gem, which shouldn't be hidden. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're, we're excited by your news. But for those who don't know anything about it, let's start with the beginning, which is, you know, what is Destination Cape Smokey? Well, it's, it's funny that you asked that because it's kind of a different outlook on uh, until this point for traditional ski areas. Because, you know, usually for until this point in time, everybody looked at a ski area or a hill. They says, OK, in winter, this place has snow. We will take skiers and snowboarders and telemarkers to top to the mountain and they will ski down. And for basically more than half of the year, they are shut and are waiting and preparing for the next season. And we, you know, that model, especially in today's world where, you know, kind of weather is becoming a little bit more uh, unpredictable and so on and so on, becomes a little bit unsustainable, especially in more the temperate climates like uh, Cape Britain is located at, you know, the winter sometimes starts earlier, sometimes later and so on and so on. So we basically added on to the model that it's not just for the winter aspects, but it's also for the summer aspect, creating a basically a resort which can operate all year round. And when you look at, you know, the resort is, you know, usually you have, as you pointed out before, in Cape Britain, you have beautiful views, which everybody wants to see. And, you know, from the Cabot Trail, you get kind of a glimpse of it. But at the top of the Cape Smoky, it's, you know, it's something different. It's something else. You're almost looking at it from a bird's eye view. But we didn't really want to stop just there to be kind of uh, just bringing people for the beautiful view, even though that is a marvelous gem and we might be starting out like that. But as time goes on, we want to add activities and for the gondola and then later on the tree walk to be kind of, you know, the spine and the lookout tower of Pisa, you know, that's why everybody comes there. But the reason why people stay is these activities, which will they kind of be doing and involved in starting from downhill mountain biking all the way to scuba diving, hopefully one day. And uh, we would like to have over the four seasons, basically just shy of 50 different activities. They would obviously alternate through, uh, through the year. Uh, so obviously you would not be doing biking in the winter, uh, vice versa, you would not be doing snowmobiling in the summer, right? And um, they would alternate and we would create this place, which would be for lack of a better expression, something like a green Disneyland. Gotcha. That's, yeah. that's kind of in a night, nutshell what, uh, what we want or what we are working on uh, day and night to achieve to Cape Smoky to be. Excellent. So, so there is, there, there is um, sort of a growing worldwide trend towards, I don't know what you call ecotourism or light adventure tourism. And that, that, is that kind of the demographic that you're focused on? Very much so. It's, you know, we, we are looking at basically uh, two demographics as, as a whole. One, which is on the Cabot Trail, especially on the summer, which, you know, it's, we have done multiple studies. We know there is a certain client which goes on the Cabot Trail uh, for the view, for the, uh, for the ecology, for the animals which live here. And that's the type of a client we want to just attract and create a highlight uh, on the Cabot Trail, uh, some, a reason why somebody would stop and get out of the car. And our second demographic kind of, which we want to start attracting slowly over time is uh, kind of younger families uh, to come into the area, start enjoying them and start to be the attraction, uh, not just a highlight for lack of a better expression uh, on the trail itself. Gotcha. So, so how did you first become aware of the potential of the site? It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I know it's for many people who are living here over decades or years and years. It's hard to see, but Cape Britain is like if New Zealand and Hawaii had a child. It's gorgeous, beautiful in every measurable way. <laughs> Wow, it's, I'm going to use that if you don't mind. 
but you know, he, here is the hint that this child was lost. It's uh, oh. you know every, every, every it's, and it's in its funniness is just a coincidence. I'm not a geologist to be able to say, uh, say anything about it. But even if you look on a map, New Zealand has the sh similar shape as Nova Scotia as has a whole. But uh, you know, it's it almost looks like the fauna of uh, the fauna of uh, of New Zealand sort of is here and the rolling hills of Hawaii kind of, uh, or sorry, vice versa, uh, which is kind of happening here. And it's beautiful, gorgeous. And it's a shame that nobody knows about this place and that there is no, no, not more tourists and activities kind of eco uh, happening in this, uh, in this area. To kind of get back to your question is how we first learned of this area is uh, we started actually the company or some uh, Joseph actually Balaz. It's don't know if you heard of him. Uh, started looking for some properties to purchase for real estate development, which we started in the past here. And he was driving basically from Florida up north, and he always was kind of going around, going around, say everywhere. You know, there's too many houses. It's ugly. It's not. Uh, it's not beautiful. And then by complete mistake, to be honest, he crossed the borders from U.S. and went to Canada and found the Cabot Trail, which was kind of uh, the Cinderella slipper. You know, it's uh, yeah. found something truly special on end of uh, end of the trail. Gotcha, gotcha. Pristine, very, fairly pristine in there. Yes, yeah. Very much so. Yeah. So, yes. are, are, where are you from originally? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I was born and raised in Czech Republic. Oh, and okay. uh, and uh, this is I obviously went to university in the US, but that's kind of it's this is my in the kind of the Anglo Saxon world. I have uh, spent only about five years of my life, so uh, fairly a newcomer still to this uh, uh, prism to look at the world. Right, right. Well, sometimes it takes a fresh set of eyes to see things that are should be obvious, but yeah, you can become inured to them over time. And then, you know, anyway. Um, yeah. So you mentioned a couple of things you're doing. So the gondola, uh, and I've, I've been following the news of that. Can you can you describe it for me and suggest, and maybe tell me when it'll be over? Yeah. So this, well, we are hoping kind of, you know, late August, it's for the opening for the gondola. We are actually, uh, you know, splicing the cable tomorrow and uh, and hopefully we'll start with some of the tests, uh, as I mentioned in August, to make it operation. But it's the only one in Atlantic Canada to start with. It's completely different than a chairlift for two reasons. You know, it's uh, safety for us and handicap accessibility is uh, the two main paramount things. Not saying that chairlifts are not safe. I'm not, not saying that, you know, especially for young children, it's if you have, you know, you're sitting on a chair, they can slide out, something can happen. Not that it ever does and it's just, but it's, you know, it, it can make some people uneasy, uh, that kind of things. People who are a little bit timid of heights sitting on a chair, you know, your feet are dingling. It also makes them slightly uneasy sometimes. And uh, especially if you're a handicap, uh, it's very difficult to get on a chairlift and get to the top. So the reason why we are going with the gondola is it's a detachable one as well, or all of gondolas are detachable. That means that uh, normally the gondola travels five meters per second, but at the bottom, it connects from the rope and it slows down to significantly less than half a meter per second. So it's almost, you know, walking, not, not even walking speed. You can comfortably come in, get seated. You know, there is all walls on the one side. You have closing doors. So when it, you're leaving the station, the door closes, you know, and you go up. So there is no risk of anybody falling out. There is no risk or it's very comfortable for people who have a hard time walking to get in. It's many people who have anxieties of heights. It's very comforting because they are not uh, dangling in air for a lot of better ex expression. Gotcha. And it's just that comfort 
level and the accessibility which we want to portray uh, to uh, to our resort and all the things which we're planning for. That's why we decided we would go with the gondola. So how much is one, how many people does one car hold? <laughs> eight, eight people is for one car, and we have 27 of them in total. Okay. And we have plans as time goes on to expand on that, to increase the capacity of it as uh, times goes on. And hopefully we'll be getting a significant amount of tourists to come here uh, to see the views. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so the other thing I've been reading about is is the tree walk. Yes. And I, it's, it's um, I assume they exist in Europe and other places, do they? Yes, yes, yes. So we have for the tree walks, there is uh, the investment team. Uh, which is involved here in Cape Smoky, runs other, I believe it's eight tree walks and other three or four are on the way. Uh, and uh, they're basically composed of two parts, uh, which is, you know, it's never more than 6%, kind of continuing with that handicap accessible uh, feature, what we talked about a little bit earlier. So, you know, if you are on a wheelchair or mother is pushing with a trolley, it's a, a beautiful, safe walk. Uh, and it starts that you're not below the tree canopy or not above the tree canopy, you're in the tree canopy. Because for the first time, the tree walk mm, tries to connect people with nature. You know, these days, especially people in bigger urban uh, cities, they have a hard time understanding what nature is or uh, what they should do with this empty space. It, many people see it kind of as... <laughs> As you know, that's behind the city and uh, we don't know what, uh, what kind of to identify it or how the animals live there, you know. They, uh, so this is the first attempt that people get on the tree walk, they see nature uh, and they are able to touch it, feel it. We hope that we will be able to work with a wild rescue group. So when you get on the tree walk, you have animals who are recovering from our injuries below for many people that will be for the first time, they will see a quotation, a wild animal, uh, you know, below them. And they're still walking, you know, let's say 80% of the tree walk uh, in the walkway, they will be walking in the tree canopy and there will be kind of fun, fun facts. You know, you say this tree, this is doing this X, Y, and Z. We will have bird nests there for small ones, you know, so people can see it and visually explore what's happening. And on the, when you are, you know, 80% through the walkway itself, the trees open up and you have this beautiful view of the Bay of Inganish. It's, uh, I don't know if you have ever been here, but it's from top of Cove Smoky. Yes, yeah. It's completely gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. So it's, you see, see, see all of it. And you're right now at 15 meters above ground. And that's when the lookout tower will start. And it's, again, no more than 6% of incline. You will slowly start going to the top. You will end at 30 meters above uh, ground, and you will see the best view you have seen in your lifetime. Uh, the whole surrounding area, you know, you will see perfectly the Celtic Lodge, the golf course there, and the other highland uh, markers of the area. And obviously on the whole way back uh, to the gondola, you will see uh, and will be able to enjoy the view of the surrounding lands. That's kind of the, you know, the, as we, as I described it before, kind of the leaning tower of the Pisa. That's the, the kind of a must-see attraction, as same as the gondola is. Gotcha. So um, now looking at your website, I think uh, I infer that social mm -hmm. activities are, are part of your formula. Is that is that correct? <laughs> And uh, <laughs> yes, um, yes. and tell me tell me a bit about that. Like you do you host. Um, I I see a DJ coming up. So you have music events on site. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so we started. You know, this uh, we have right now a portable kitchen at our marina, and uh, we are renting kayaks there, for example, and other stuff. And we start with we are starting with small events. Uh, which are going on, you know, uh, uh, buying the COVID restrictions, making sure that we are crossing all of our, uh, uh, crossing all of our T's and dotting our I's, you know, so it's safe with all those restrictions. And we started with small events, but we hope, you know, as soon as we open the gondola, uh, 
then we will be adding bigger and bigger and bigger events. You might have, you know, when first time we opened the ski hill, this is before COVID, you know, we started straight away with King of the Mountain, that's where the ski do race is. Uh, and we have a very good working relationship with Breton Air, for example, where we did a couple of times already, you know, heli skiing uh, together and other activities. And we hope with time and time, our events will be more ambitious and larger in scale uh, to kind of turn turn this English as a whole, as a spectacle. And uh, hopefully one day it's English will be on a couple of occasions like Monaco, you know, that the whole world will come to see. Oh yeah, or Whistler even. To forget. Or Whistler. Yes, so yes, that, you mentioned your partnership with, or your, your collaboration with Breton Air. Are you collaborating with other small local businesses? Are you going to be the, the hub of a new ecosystem, resort that's, ecosystem? You know, that's what our business model is built around this. Uh, we invite any, you know, small business which would like to work with us. Uh, if it fills into the portfolio, our kind of goal is not to come and do everything because, uh, you know, then who has the time? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who has the time? We, we would like to, it's for example, it's, you know, we would like to be the umbrella for everything. So you come to Cape Smoky and you want to run a paintball club. It's, uh, we want it on our property. And we want to, you know, work out the agreement so it's mutually beneficial for both parties. And we want to package it for you and get people there and so on and so on. And we want to talk with uh, people who are doing different activities. And we are just basically the, a large center for, for these activities. And we are able to help people push it and get the people there. Because, you know, it's, that's one of the problems, for example, with the Cabot Trail and people driving around. Right now, you have a large amount of tourists doing this trip, but uh, you have uh, one artisan market, for example, here, and then you drive for two minutes, five minutes, and then you have another, you know, small activity over there. And yes, yeah. you know, how many tourists realistically want to drive, jump in their car, get in, drive for two minutes, get out, <laughs> try another activity? Yeah, and it would take them ten years. Uh, uh, to uh, to go around the Cabot Trail itself. So we really want to be the hub of all of these activities and uh, any of these small businesses which kind of want to come and work with us, you know, if they fill into our portfolio what we want to achieve and we can find a, a mutually beneficial path, what we are trying to do together, we most definitely want to work with them. Super, super. So I have to ask about the beer because, well, <laughs> because beer, you know, <laughs> yes, yes, and yes, of yes. course you, you mentioned you, you had a Czech background and Bohemia was world famous for its hops. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I so think, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, I don't know. I, many people will disagree with me, but you know, this is a fact people can look it up. Uh, Czech people drink the most beer per capita per person and uh in really? the world yes 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 <laughs> i think in uh, don't quote me on this but i think we are 14 liters uh, uh for at 14 liters and i think second is germany at 12 so we're we have a quite a substantial lead over everybody and it's we are very very proud of it you know it's you know pilsner was mm -hmm. the first uh you know pilsner Ulka was the first light beer in the uh, in the world and we have a very proud tradition and many people, you know, identify themselves with beer and uh, therefore, you know, Cape Smoky eventually will have to have a microbrewery. That's uh, excellent. Uh, kind of, it's uh, for a Czech person not having a beer, it's not like having socks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of goes in hand. And uh, we, we run a couple of microbreweries back in Europe and this is kind of the early stages where we are working on, you know, the plans and the blueprints for our own micro microbrewery. We have to start, you know, thinking because every climate is a little bit different. The beer is cooked a little bit differently. And uh, we also have to start trying to see uh, what kind of people like our beer and if perhaps what we are cooking is appreciated by the, uh, the, um, 
the local clients and local people. So this is kind of a first test batch. What we did, we had some previous two years ago, we had previous collaborations, which went really, really well. And uh, we had our own brewmaster come over here, cook the beer. Uh, and it's, I think it turned out wonderfully. If actually, if anybody wants to try it, uh, we have it right now on sale on our marina uh, where they can go kayaking and, uh, and try, well, I'm biased, but I think the best beer in Cape Breton, that's for sure. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I don't know if you know this, but we had, prior to COVID, of course, everything changed after that, but yes, yes, yes. we had a Cape Breton beer festival here every, I think in the fall or maybe early winter. And we had yes, yes. Uh, microbreweries from right across Nova Scotia that would come and, and demonstrate and, yes. you know, lots of live music and stuff and definitely uh, we'd love to see your beer in that if, if it goes, if it ever happens again. I guess that remains to be seen. Oh, very much so. Yeah. All right. No, so, we'll, we'll never think in our power to do so. Yeah. So, do you have anything else you want to tell us um, at this point? No, they were pretty much, you know, we hope that we'll be opening, you know, in the next months or so. And uh, there, there will be a little bit of rough edges because, you know, COVID really slowed us down and not only COVID, but it was a couple of those missteps uh, where, you know, the borders opened and closed and opened and closed. In the beginning, we had a little bit of difficulty to get going. That's why we didn't manage our original target of Canadian Day when we wanted to open. Right. But, uh, but we are still opening this year. We'll be opening, as I said, in, in a month or so. And I hope that everybody will come and uh, and see the beauties of Cape Breton. I, I see also that you're hiring on your website. Oh, most definitely. That's uh, build out the team. <laughs> we are we are very very uh, we are trying to look for as many much talent as possible, and uh, and people who you know who are excited for this kind of stuff because I personally and once again I'm biased. I don't believe we are offering only work. We are almost offering, uh, I don't want to say a way of life, but uh, you know, it's, you get, you get to be, you know, at, at a place and try many in the future activities. Uh, and, uh, and you can be a lot of the time outside and so on and so on that uh, that's not allowed in uh, many of the industries. And we hope to bring and put together a very strong team, which uh, will work well together and, uh, and will be happy about what's happening uh, for Cape Britain as a whole, and will be happy uh, just where they're working. Well, Martin, thanks for being with me today and sharing your story. That was Martin K. Val, uh, CEO of Destination Cape Smoky. I'm Richard Lorway, president of GoCapeBreton.com, and we'll see you next time on Cape Breton Movers and Shakers.